Greetings everybody from the Honda Company here in Tokyo, Japan. The power of dreams. And I want to do a tribute video today to Reuben Israel. I did not meet Reuben until 2011. I had been street preaching for 10 years in Florida, just the southern part of America, you know, like uh, Texas, places like that. I had always wanted to go to California. So after I moved into my Honda, I decided I'm going to go to California. So the weekend of my 10th anniversary of being a street preacher, Reuben and his wife opened their home and baked me a cake to celebrate 10 years of being a street preacher. Normal churches don't bake cakes for street preachers and celebrate 10 years of ministry. But it takes one to know one. Street preachers know each other. As I was going from Texas, it took about three days to sleep in my car all the way to California. And I remember um, going over this part of California and I didn't have any Wi-Fi. But then I got my signal back and I had a, a phone call and it was Reuben and he said, welcome to California, sister. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. Today, Reuben passed away and it flooded me with a different emotion. So I just went to the mall to, to get uh, one of those uh, massage chairs for two dollars in Japan to like just help my nerves and I saw a Long Beach California t-shirt and it took me back to Reuben that was our first outreach together he suggested I preach on the Hollywood Walk of Fame so that's what I did before I met him and one of my greatest heart's desires was to preach on top of Motley Crue's star because Motley Crue was the band that influenced me away from Jesus. So when I got born again, I had a tattoo of Motley Crue. On my way, the 10th anniversary of being a street preacher, I preached on top of that star before I got to the Chinese theater where Reuben suggested I preach. And then they baked me a cake and it was just a really great memory. My first outreach with him though was at the Long Beach Gay Pride March. And Reuben has a great sense of humor. I'll never forget that outreach. And after the outreach was over, there was a little Chinese pug there that day, and I looked over and I hugged it, and that was the start of a whole new season for me, a whole new life for me in California. I didn't really know anybody there. I didn't know him there. I didn't know what was about to happen. All I knew was, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to live in California, and when I moved into my car, that's the first place I decided to go. I'm going to California. And somebody in my church in Texas said, you ought to look up Reuben Israel. So I did before I even went there. And after Reuben became my pastor, it was a house church. And I had been going to like Assembly of God, Pentecostal type churches the whole time I was a Christian. So this was really different. It was a house church full of street preachers 
So I called it the John the Baptist Support Group. And Reuben said, years later, he said, street preachers are the armpit of the body of Christ. His church was awesome because I finally felt normal for the first time. I'm talking the first time I really felt like I fit was being amongst other street preachers. Because I didn't really know any other street preachers, certainly not anybody that had done it 10 years. But in that church, um, I met so many other street preachers and it wasn't about uh, revival. It wasn't about um, uh, how many songs can we sing? How many goosebumps can we feel? It was all about we're going to be bold for Christ. We're going to be warriors. And Reuben taught me how to deal with the police. He taught me how to deal with hate mail, how to deal with of family rejection, how to deal with jail, court cases, um, yeah, police, news media, um, yeah, death threats, hate mail. And I remember I had gone through all these things while I was going to his uh, house church. And one time in 2013, I had got like three death threats in my hometown, and he said, I will come over there and defend you if I have to. And I was like, wow. Reuben was radical. He was very radical. And I think about the good things he has taught me as a radical pastor. And I think about the good things that the professionals in the churches, they've taught me. Many people have taught me many things. I have had five people close to me die in the past year. The man that was there for my very first preaching and had mentored me the first years of me being a street preacher. He passed away last year. Brother Jed, I preached with him all across America while living in my Honda. He was my influence on the college campuses. I learned a lot from him. My best friend, Gail, that I loved and drank coffee with and would laugh more with her than anybody. Love to have coffee with her. Made her several videos in my journey. She died this year in April. And then my mother passed away in March. And now Reuben is the fifth person that has died in the past year that was close to me. And my mother said to me one time, she said, you don't have many friends, you have contacts. <laughs> and I told a brother here in Tokyo that uh, last week, the guy that interviewed me while I was living in Turkey, and he said, well, what is a friend? And I said, I'm glad you asked that. A friend is somebody that supports you. And Reuben was a big support to me. I can remember when I preached at uh, the Michael Jackson trial, Dr. Conrad Murray. Somebody found a picture of me preaching in London in a magazine, sent it to Reuben, and then Reuben sent it to me. And this is the way Reuben was. He was always encouraging me in my ministry. He's the one that told me, go to your court case. So I was like, yeah, I got arrested. I got this court case 2016. He said, you need to go and stand up to the Netherlands and remind them they arrested an American. They arrested a woman Christian street preacher. 
So because of Ruben, I went to six court cases in the Netherlands. I remember when somebody did something really bad. I don't want to tell the whole story on this video. Um, concerning my family, a really bad attack. I got a bad email. It wasn't just words, okay? It was, it was a really bad picture. It just, it was bad, okay? And I told Ruben, and he said, these people will leave you alone when they get some new story and new person to pick on. And I got about hate mail for about 10 days. It was, it was bad. And it's true, it stopped. But I remember what Ruben said to me. He said, you should have changed your last name, but it's too late now. Israel is not his real last name. He had a different last name. When he started his ministry, he purposely had a different last name to protect his family. It's very important as a street preacher. I learned so much from him that I could have never learned from my uh, churches or even Bible school. I remember preaching with Reuben one time in California and we were at this convention and over here to the left was the porn convention. Over here to the right was the, the marijuana smoking convention. And Reuben said, I'm going to stand out here and preach. Hold the banner. You go inside. I said, by myself? Now, if you've been watching my channel now, you know I'm way past by myself. But that was over 10 years ago. And I would say that Reuben made me bolder than I already was. I remember him telling somebody one time, we found her like this. Like when I showed up in California, I was already bold. I was already 10 years in street preaching. He said, we found her like this. But I have to say, in the defense of Reuben Israel, he took me to a whole new level of boldness and fearlessness and being a warrior. He did not baby me. He, he was compassionate. I told him some things I had gone through in the church and rejection. He was compassionate. Matter of fact, Reuben allowed me, because I didn't have a home, Reuben allowed me to use his home address for my mail. I have to make this video. My mother used to ask me how Reuben was doing. Yeah. I got my mail at this house. He didn't baby me though. I never had a shower at his house. I, I never washed my clothes at his house. I never slept in his house. And he didn't feel sorry for me living in my car. Matter of fact, he would tell me that other people live in their car for the gospel. And he would tell me about Christians suffering for their faith at the point of death, jail, being beaten. Me living in my Honda? Yeah, I'm at Honda, Tokyo, Japan telling this cool story. Reuben would love me telling the story here. It's really not that big of a deal to live in your car for the gospel. And I appreciate Reuben being my pastor uh, at that time saying that because he, he helped me be humble. And I remember one time he said to me, a student is not above their teacher. That was powerful too. He would pray over me 
while I was overseas, he would pray for me in his house church. He would let me know he cared. And I remember one time he told me a story. He said, years ago, there was a guy that went to the mission field. And he told his church that he was going to the mission field. So this guy's church prayed over him. And when the guy got done being a missionary and he got back to his church, he came in there excited. And he says, hey, I'm back from the mission field. And the church looked at him like, who are you? We don't remember you. And that guy backslid. And Reuben told me that story several times. And I think that's one reason why every once in a while, he would write me and say, we're praying for you at the church. We're praying for you. We love you. I didn't have my picture on some big fancy plaque on some church somewhere, but I had a group of street preachers that loved me. And I told Raven I wanted to start a coffee shop. Ruben knew I loved the Netherlands. I got this here in Japan. And Ruben was supportive of me. Ruben knew I wanted to get married, and I remember one of his comments to me. He said, I want to talk to this man that you want to marry and see if he's worthy of you. That was years ago. That was years ago. Reuben was concerned. Is that man worthy of me? That was like 2013 or something. Is that man worthy of you? It's Father's Day. The Brownsville Revival started on Father's Day, 1995. I stand here at the Honda Company thinking about the different preachers that have been in my life. My preacher friend that's a street preacher in Japan, he gave me this yesterday. Reuben used to get lots of mail from street preachers all over the world. And there's a loss right now with Reuben being gone, with Jed being gone. I don't know who God's going to take next. Certainly makes me want to work harder for the Lord, doesn't it, you? I hope so. Stay steady on our course for the Lord. Reuben used to get phone calls from the FBI. I always thought that was one of the coolest. It's just, it's cool when the FBI calls you and says, are you going to be coming to our city next week? Because we need to know. No small stir. That is awesome. Yeah, I'll defend Reuben. He was good to me.